So this past Christmas, I bought another Casio for my wife as a little stocking stuffer. Don't get me wrong, she loves her Amigas, her Cartiers, her Rolexes, but she wears the Casios in her collection the most, so I knew she'd really appreciate this. And at 25 bucks, it's just a no-brainer. And I thought, well, that was the end of it. But then, of course, I borrowed it for a day. <laughs> and here we are. It evokes a feeling in me that is one of the gold standards when it comes to a review. I start questioning why I collect and if I should even bother with anything more expensive. Idiot! Am I deluded by rose-tinted nostalgia or am I nearing a higher stage in watch collecting? Let's find out. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show, to another unsponsored, independent, and maybe a little bit biased, as I do love Casio, but yeah, another uh, independent review. Do hit that like button if you wanna see more videos for free like this. It's the best way to support the channel. I'll do a quick wristwatch check, just wearing the Sand Shark here. And I just realized, I think I may have designed <laughs> this color scheme just to match the jacket. I think that is, watch enthusiast uh, <laughs> to a whole, <laughs> taking it to a whole new level. But anyway, uh, congrats to everyone who managed to purchase one. It sold out in about 20 minutes, not quite the two minutes of the Safari there, but then again, this is a substantially more expensive watch. Anyway, if you're lucky enough to get one, do enjoy and thank you so much. I know I'm absolutely loving mine. Right, uh, where should we start? We start with a little context. So this watch was released in 2019 for Casio's vintage collection. Being completely smitten at the time, and still am with my favorite Casio, the Mission Impossible DW270, I kind of overlooked it when it was initially released. Aesthetically, it's based on the very first Casio digital watch, the slightly whimsically named Casio Tron from 1972. I don't know about you, but I immediately think of Buck Rogers. It made horological history by being the first digital watch ever to include an automatically changing calendar function. We definitely take it for granted these days, with all the fancy schmancy things smartwatches are capable of. But you gotta remember, at the time this was the hottest and newest must-have tech. Everyone has their own idea of what a yuppie is, so do they really exist? In the interests of journalistic inquiry, we laced a trap with enormous amounts of champagne. Would this shy, much envied species show itself? $6,955 retail. In Philadelphia, it's worth 50 bucks. Even the status symbol flexing yuppies of the subsequent 80s traded in their luxury watches with snooty sounding names for these digital watches instead. No, 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 this is a rush for coal. But rather going upscale to put another nail in the Swiss coffin during the quartz crisis, Casio made a checkmate genius move, arguably even greater than the recent Moonswatch debacle. A move that, once unleashed, would have far-reaching consequences and still keep Casio swimming in that ducktail's money to this very day. In 1977, they released another retro-futuristic wristwatch called the F100. The watch was the first wristwatch to be made primarily out of resin, not only making it extremely light, compared to the previous metal-made watches, but more importantly, it enabled Casio watches to mass-produce them on a scale never seen before, more easily, quickly, and at less cost. Digital watches were now not just luxury for the newly moneyed anymore. As Stranger Things perfectly demonstrates, Casio went mainstream, and the rest is history. 
So why are we talking about the F100? Well, it was a really important watch for Casio. It was a turning point because before the F100, Casio was almost like a luxury brand. Well, not a luxury brand, but it was seen as aspirational. It was cutting edge tech. It was the, uh, the newest toy for, for those that could afford it. And then with the introduction of the F100, we saw their uh, resin material really take off and Casio became more mainstream, more accessible to more people. In recent years, Casio have tried to reintroduce full metal because you see the A700 here, it's not actual real metal in the case, just stainless steel in the case back and the bracelet. It's actually made of some kind of plastic, faux, metallic looking. I mean, it looks the part, but you can tell because of the weight of it. As you saw in previous reviews, not everyone is willing to pay hundreds of dollars for a full metal Casio like this. Strange, the, the full metal G-Shocks rarely took off, but these watches didn't. And I think it's because it's almost like they're a victim of their own marketing. So their response is to really refine the entry level. You might remember the funky looking F100 in Ridley Scott's Capo Lavoro, Alien. The Oscar winning British costume designer, John Mollo, conjoined two of them together for the wrist of the main protagonist, Ellen Ripley, and in doing so, perfectly complementing the movie's incredible set and juxtaposing the nightmarish biomechanical creations of H.R. Giger. If you didn't know, John Mollo was the same chap who took a German military helmet and created another immortal icon, Darth Vader, only a year before, in 1977. In 1989, Casio introduced the F91W, which went on to become one of their highest selling watches of all time, an undisputed horological icon, which effectively replaced the F100. 91W then evolved into more upscale uh, versions, you could say, with the A168, A158, there's many other references, and of course, gold tone variations as well. That brings us to here with the A700, which I believe will effectively replace in time the uh, 158 and the 156. The A700W takes its design language from the first historic Casiotrons, or more specifically, the slightly later 49CGS-24B, aka the Casiotron Super Slim. This is then ingeniously and seamlessly blended with watch designer Ayasuke Moriai's classic F91W with its three button layout and functionality. Now there are several variations, but the black dial variant in my opinion is the most fun with its retrolicious subtle pops of 80s hot pink, various blues, Starship Trooper gray, and even a little dash of mint green. The positioning of these colors is a clever nod to where the calendar indicators were on the original Cassiotron that made it so revolutionary. Inside is the fantastically useful module 3472, so expect to see the same handy complications and accuracy. However, what is different and elevates this watch beyond all the other offerings at this price range from Casio is the now amber LED backlight. It's simply outstanding and has a pleasing warm tone to it that is consistent in illumination across the display that is under a mineral crystal. It's so much better than the lopsided green glow of the now dated 593 module in the predecessors. And even the alarm is a little bit louder. So performance wise, a vast improvement. Another thing that suggests that this is going to replace the 158 in particular is the sharper, more angular, it's less rounded edges. More 80s rather than the Casiotrons, which are more curvy, more 70s. This is very Giugiaro-esque, you could say. I look at it and I think Countach, you know, immediately, right? The Casio. These nifty upgrades alone are worth the extra 15 bucks over the $10 F91W price tag. Or put it into perspective, compared to the A158 or 168, the difference between them is less than the price of a terrible cup of coffee from Starbucks. But the upgrades continue. They also managed to shave off over two millimeters in height compared to its predecessors. 
it might not sound like much. And while the diameter is rather similar, just a bit more square, this change in slenderness gives it a drastic boost in overall fit and feel. We are in dress watch territory here. And if my recently reviewed White Shadow, designed by Gerald Genta and its micro rotor based super skinny profile has taught me anything, thin watches are always super comfortable and a real pleasure to wear. The Universal Genève, you're really limited to formal attire, unless of course you do a Keanu Reeves with his recently discussed sprezzatura of mixing it with casual clothes. But this, however, you definitely can wear it more casually or more formally, no problem at all. It has that super versatility. And I think it's down to its retro futuristic aesthetic. The bracelet will certainly be a bone of contention for some, and while the original super slim Cassiotron came on something similar, they took a leaf out of the databank DBC 611's book, with its wider and elegantly tapering flat rectangles, consisting of unfortunately cheaply folded links. We see the same stainless steel adjustable flip and lock stamped clasp, which while unquestionably rudimentary, it is undeniably very practical to get the right fit jingly jangly by today's standards it's almost part of the charm it meets the case neatly with the same hooded lugs as the very first Cassiotron. and if you really hate the bracelet with its 18 millimeter lug width you can easily pop it onto any inexpensive water resistant strap i put mine on a nylon strap from wrist candy watch club and voila a beta watch ready for anything so what about the negatives? Well, first of all, the battery life is reduced from seven years down to three. And I suspect because of this newer module, it has that very bright backlight, which is of course gonna drain more power. The 30 meters water resistance is disappointing, most likely due to the thinner case. But then again, it states the same for the classic F91W. And I have worn those in the shower after cardio and they survive perfectly fine. The larger wristed will complain at its period correct unisex scale, but I've seen this watch on far bigger guys than me and my six and a half inch wrist, and it still looks great. Personally, I would have preferred a brushed case to match the bracelet and make the transition a little more graceful. So in conclusion, Casio absolutely knocked it out of the park with this. I think it's intelligently designed, definitely the best affordable option under the $30 mark. In my opinion, it's the best watch. I really do think so. It may not have the cinematic stardom or the iconic status of their other watches in this price range, but it does pay homage in the truest sense of the word to their most important watch of all time, the Casiochon. That, after all, started it all. Despite the realism that today can be achieved and reproduced in modern computer games, I still always go back to the original Command and Conquer. Welcome back, Commander. While there is undeniably a strong emotional connection, a response to the stimuli passing through the amygdala deep in my brain, which is the scientific interpretation of what we call nostalgia, it goes far beyond a simple hankering over the cliched good old days. I play Command and Conquer and rewatch classic movies or listen to old favorite music, not just for that warm, fuzzy feeling of familiarity, but because they are good, they are fun, well-made and cleverly designed. The same way watches may seem to be dated compared to today's technology, John McTiernan's Die Hard or Victorio De Sica's Ladri di Biciclette might not compare to what they can achieve in Hollywood today. But like this Casio, the newest stuff more often than not fails to be as fun, financially accessible, lovable or compelling. In previous videos, I have discussed the rather insidious manipulation of nostalgia in modern marketing. There's none of that here with Casio. When I see somebody out in the wild wearing one of these retro-inspired digital watches, I automatically want to talk to them. Not something I can say for all the uninspired derivative smartwatches or the overly ubiquitous Rolex Submariner. So there we have it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Perhaps you own this watch. Do share your feedback. Uh, what would you like to see from Casio? What is your favorite Casio under the $30 price point? Do share that as well. Uh, don't forget to like this video, very important indeed, and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Onwards and upwards, ciao.